Cypress Swamp and a pond. Through that pond runs a creek which goes into the Rickfield River. A little downstream from there, there's a sinkhole called Shadrick Sink that's on the west side of the river. The river water leaks into that and goes several miles east to the site of Valdosta's water wells, which have had to sink twice as deep as they originally had them because of that water. I can uh, send you, uh, I'm sure. Yeah, you guys this. have been polluting that Florida <laughs> River over there. Exactly. Um, and I, I, I'm going to bring that up. <laughs> There's good news about that. There is good news about that. That's true. Oh. Right. So, and then uh, somewhat downstream from there, just north of USA, Fort Safe Drill Pipeline wants to drill under the Wetsukuchi River. Now, they claim. Um, uh, some of this USGS published uh, information says that water goes as far as 15 miles underground to Valdosta's water wells. Sable Trail claimed, and you can find this, uh, they thought it for, that it is impossible that any contaminants caused by their drilling would ever get to Valdosta's water wells. Now that word impossible is not one I've really seen elsewhere in the geological literature. <laughs> and the reason they say that is because the water flow goes southwest. I like that. Water flow goes southwest, that means it could go to Madison County, Florida, which I have spoken to the Madison County Commission about. They also say, well, it can take decades. Okay, well, that means the pipeline executives in Houston, Texas could be retired with their golden parachutes, and your children and grandchildren can be dealing with problems. Okay, a little farther downstream, we come to the state line, and as you're alluding to, just because somebody drew a line on the map doesn't mean that the river stopped there. In particular, the wastewater from Valdosta. We've been getting complaints for years all the way down to the Gulf. And for that reason, amongst others, Walls has always built the lower Swanee Basin as well. Fortunately, we don't have to deal so much with Santa Fe because there's a marvelous organization doing that. <laughs> okay, so um, also with the Lower Savani River, we deal with things like investment purchases by Bill Gates and other people from the West Coast. I don't know if you're aware of how many thousands of acres those guys have bought in Savani, Madison, Hamilton, Counties, Florida, and Lines and Eccles, Georgia. I mean, I last checked on it in detail a couple of years ago, and they've more than doubled their purchases. Something that you might be concerned about. This is not something that's happened to the east, it's something that's happening right here in your territory. Okay, so uh, a little bit more about walls. We do have members all the way down the Gulf. We have members all the way over in Palm Beach County where the headquarters of the FPL is. These rate payers are going to fund this $3 billion. If it gets passed through this $3 billion, let me use a technical term, boondoggle. And I call it a boondoggle because there are more jobs in the solar industry than in all of oil and gas and coal extraction combined. The market has spoken. The market has said solar power is winning. The price of solar power keeps getting lower. It's now cheaper to install solar power than anything else, not to mention faster to install, far cleaner. It doesn't leak because sinkholes burn or boil up. And in fact, Georgia is the fastest growing U.S. solar market. I'm proud to say I had a tiny amount to do with that. Also, in Georgia, the Georgia legislature last March, by a vote of 128-34, said, no easements for you, Sable Trail, to drill under our rivers. Now, I bring that up because I hear various people saying, I'm not picking on you, um, that, well, we can't do this because the feds have said, or, and the Corps says, well, it's already been through the FERC process, 
And FERC says, well, it's actually the Florida Public Service Commission that determined the need for this pipeline. And by the way, the need was determined solely by they have customers. It says nothing about the environmental considerations. Okay, so back to the specifics here. In Florida, um, we have right here in this room Walls members from Madison, Hamilton, Swanee, and Columbia County. So people think we're just Georgia, but believe me, I spend I think, more time in Florida lately than anywhere else. Okay, um, someone asked previously, what's the evidence Sable Trail has not been following the rules or telling FERC and you, for example, everything? Here's the two geological reports by two completely different practicing geologists who don't even know each other. I uh, will be happy to send you the PDF, but I can also just hand you these copies for right now. Um, the right person had it too. Thank you. And what I really came to talk about is some more specific evidence. I uh, distributed copies to you through your staff earlier of a letter from Walls to Mike Fuller in resource management. Um, I mentioned his name merely to identify the letter. It's nothing about him in particular. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to summarize some major points. There is a pipe yard full of 36-inch pipe, which is pipe owned by Sable Trail. The pipe yard is north of Lake City, Florida. It's just off of 441, north of I-10. It is an unregistered pipe yard. Sable Trail has acknowledged, as you'll find in this other letter that I sent you, that I get distributed, which was to FERC. Sable Trail has acknowledged that they should have, let's see, two years ago, they said they should, before using any pipe yard, they should ask FERC and get approval. They did not. Now they're trying to get around that. Back to what this specifically has to do with you is someone previously said, we have a set of laws that we have to follow, okay? The Environmental <coughs> Resource Permit Applicants Handbook, Volume 1, Section 7, that to that to E1, says there should be a certified delineation of the extent of wetlands and other surface waters for any wetland area. Um, yet the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers seems to be having difficulty determining whether there are or were wetlands on this site. So the first thing I'd like to know is where is this certified survey delineation of the extent of wetlands and other surface waters? If it exists, your staff should know where it is. If it doesn't exist, it seems like there should be one. <coughs> and I will uh, say why I think that. If you look in this uh, letter here to Mr. Fuller, You'll find their maps from Google Earth from 1994, 1999, 2000, 2000, 2004, 2005 that show what sure look like wetlands with a dense belt of trees on them. And since so I'm kind of used to looking at satellite pictures, I'll say those are probably oak trees. Someone on the ground, I hope, has determined that. Now, according to section 2.0818, Construction means creation of yada, 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 and, and or placement or removal of uh, structures. And cutting of trees or removal of vegetation is not considered land clearing except where it involves stump removal, removal root breaking, or grubbing. There's no sign of any stumps in the later pictures in the same series here in the letter. Can I ask you a question? Are yes. you assuming that we do the environmental research permitting on this project? For the wetlands, I'm told that you do, not for the project in general. So if someone clears wetlands in your territory, you do not do permits. We don't do it in this case. So we don't do the ERP permit for every activity on the floor. We share it both with the EP and Army Corps of Engineers. So, again, for the, the stable pipeline siting, um, you know, I hope you're talking directly with the permitting entity and Army Corps and providing the comments to them. We, we are, and the comments are quoted in this other letter, but what we sent, to what they replied to our comments, which was first they said, it's not jurisdictional wetlands, and the next day they came back and said, uh, we're not entirely sure, right now it doesn't look like it. Um, and please note that this pipe yard 
is not on the path of the pipeline. It's not even in the county that the pipeline goes through. It's in Columbia County. It's not in Swanee or Hamilton County. And I'm sure you know much better than me who exactly should do permitting, which is one reason I sent it to Swanee River Water Management District, because I'm sure that you guys can contact whoever actually needs to do it. If not, tell me who to contact, and I'll do that directly. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and my understanding was you already had written letters to, to them. Had you not? And I think that if you're talking about the yard, you know, and uh, the pipeline, just to put the pipes on, if they're in Columbia County, that's probably a county or that would oversee that. Is that right? You know? Yes, sir. That, that, I mean, that, that, like that, that, that would be, that. I mean, you know, and, and I was afraid you were assuming that we did the environmental resource permit on that project. And we, it, it goes, somebody mentioned the other, they had always, they had ways around all kinds of things, and well, that's what I'm I'm not talking about doing an environmental research, resource permit for Sable Trail per se. I'm talking about for clearing of wetlands, including forested wetlands. You're just talking about anywhere in our district? Correct. I thought we were talking about Sable Trail. It happens that Sable Trail has their pipe on top of this. Somebody at some point cleared those forested wetlands. And so there should be somewhere one of these certified survey delineation of the extent of wetlands or other surface waters. Is that the district or is that DEP? So I'd, I'd need to talk with you more to understand the specifics of it, but I'd say for the corridor that you're talking about for Sable, you know, corridor of pertinent structures if that's part of, of that the Army Corps is looking at that and just like us if we were doing permitting for consumptive use issue or something like that it's perfectly logical for you to come forward with information you think is relevant or question an assumption you know our staff has made and we can explain that to if, you. if it's but other than that instance, if it's, it's other really than the stable trail that you're talking about we're going to have to take a look if you visit with staff they could you know, Docu, you know, show them exactly where you're talking about, then we can determine whether we got it. That's, I understand. This first part happened before Sable Trail was ever announced. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just saying that we're not prepared to comment on that because we don't even know where it is, and it would take us time to, to figure <coughs> out where that is, but we would be glad to, to let, take a look at the piece of property you're talking about. Excellent. And that's part of what I'm asking about. There's a little more in here. According to FAC 62340450 vegetative index, what it looks to me like the trees are from the aerial maps, these are species on wetlands that because they were forested wetlands because, because of 2.0845, they should have been replanted. There's no sign of any replanting. That would also be something that should have happened before Sable Trail ever existed. Now, since Sable Trail existed, there's an aerial photograph in here from the excuse me, Columbia County property appraiser that shows no fill on that site, but you can see in the aerial photograph this year, early this year. Yet, if you look at the very last page here for an aerial photograph that I took from an airplane, thank you, Southwanks, with the flight from June, it sure looks like the pipe on the end there is sitting on fill, which would indicate somebody filled that area that used to be wetlands this year. Now, Sable Trail says it's not us, it's owned by a third party, which would mean, okay, in that case, maybe it's not a Sable Trail issue, and maybe it's a district or DP issue. Now, if it is a Sable Trail issue, Indeed, I agree with you. The Corps of Engineers should be paying attention to it, but they should probably use a little input from the district or DP as to is that really fill on what used to be wetlands and where's the permit? So, I'm, I'm happy to look. We'll yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at that. We just we, 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 you know, we'll have to provide that to our staff and let's take a look. Right here. I understand. You just you don't hand it to me. But you, you, I, I, I didn't see it in there. I didn't see it in there. Well, I got it right. I didn't see it in there. Oh, okay. That's a different one. Yeah. Uh, I got it. I handed it out to the three staff. Okay. Okay. So 
sorry, it was more clear. That's why I said once said Mike Fuller talk. Once again, not about him, just mentioning for identification yeah. purposes. Okay, so and um, your executive director, um, who by the way, I'm sure you know, has actually walked beside the Snowy River State Park where all the sinkholes are here, where the bike line wants to go through, which is also a new in your district. He mentioned that uh, we should be talking to the core. That's what this other one here is about. It's addressed to Firth and the core, dated July 29th. We did that, and in the back it has correspondence with the core, in which they first said, as I mentioned, it's not jurisdictional wetlands, and then, well, we don't know. Which is why I keep bringing up this uh, delineation of wetlands. If there is such a thing, which apparently there should have been, according to state law, why is the door finding such difficulty telling whether it is or isn't even wetlands? Mm -hmm. So if, if someone could do that up, that would be most useful. And if there isn't, well, you seem to have fill on unpermitted, <coughs> unpermitted fill on wetlands, which would seem to be a state issue. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, I don't know the law that well. Okay, and in this thing that I sent to FERC, I point out that FERC, did not mention to FERC. I quote here from what FERC sent in their biweekly status report. It says, the Corps of Engineers USAC determined that no jurisdictional wetlands were disturbed at the yard on the 18th of July. They did not mention it. The very next day, it's quoted in here, the Corps came back and said, the wetlands on the site do not appear to be jurisdictional and have not had any fill placed in them as of yet. Please refrain from placing any fill. If you're planning on placing fill back there, then an approved JD would have to be requested and coordinated EPA with the headquarters and, and so forth. They're not sure. Okay. You can say the trail didn't mention that. And by not sure, let me say that I got that first, I got a message from the Corps on the 18th saying it's not jurisdictional wetlands. The next day, they sent to me a retraction of that message and then forwarded this other correspondence. Mm -hmm. So the district or DEP, whoever it is, could certainly help clarify this. And what I'd also like you to do first, let me applaud you, Chairman, and the whole board and staff for Two things. One, is being willing to listen and being willing to interact with speakers. That is so refreshing. And the other thing is, thank you for already saying you're going to write a letter to the court. I would like you to ask you to be a little more specific. Would you please ask them for a supplemental environmental impact statement? Because that is a vehicle through which <coughs> New information like this and like those two geological reports can actually be evaluated. Say, well, Trail's response to FERC so far about those geological reports is they're claiming that they've already been dealt with in the process, which is, as tactful as I can say here, but not true. Because there's new information in there that has never been dealt with, not in the litigation walls at the DP not in the FERC environmental impact statement process. There's new information in those two geological reports. There's new information <coughs> here with the pipe yard. There's other new information having to do with sinkholes and underground rivers. There's a lot of things that have not been evaluated. So I'd like to ask you in your letter, please ask the Corps for a supplemental environmental impact statement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Merkel. Thank you. 